Let's start off by looking at a simple single line unison brass part. Now here's a kind of typical stylistic funky groove based on just two chords, G7, C7 in a kind of Motown style. And here's what it sounds like just as is. It's got that loose feel that I kind of like. Now here's a line that I wrote, and it's going to play back now on alto sax, and if we look at the score, you'll see it's a simple repeating line, and let's just listen to a bit of it, and I'll show you what's going on underneath. All right, so simple, nothing too fancy, but you might have noticed that there's some different articulations happening. I've got some key switching programmed in. You can see it here with these long notes underneath, and I have it filtered from the score so it's not too distracting. But if we look in a graphic editor, you can see here that I'm switching between two articulations in this whole phrase, and they're very simple. It's just a long note and short note kind of articulation. <laughs> So on these digaduta, I'm doing longer articulations, and the rest are all short staccato ones. So very basic, simple line. Sounds okay just on alto sax. If you have one horn playing it, that's one possibility. But we can have it play, let's say, on a different horn to start with. And I'm going to hide this, and I'll just copy it down to trumpet. They play in similar ranges. So it works just as well on a trumpet sound. All right, nothing too exciting. Where it starts getting more interesting is when we double these and get unison or octave parts, meaning they're playing the same part or they're playing it an octave way. Now, alto and trumpet are in similar ranges, so if I just copy this to the two different ones, we'll hear it now playing on both instruments at the same pitch. So now we're getting somewhere that's a lot more interesting. That's a very simple two-horn unison type of part. Now let's say you want to have two trumpets play it together. What I've done here is I've copied my trumpet instrument to another track. And if you want to program up two of the same instrument, and you've got a limited library, as in this case when there's only one trumpet, there's trumpet muted, but there's only one open trumpet sample, I've got to do something to establish a doubling type of sound. So what I'm going to do is just mute this one for a moment, and I'm going to copy this down so it's playing back on the two trumpets. Now, if I just play them back on two trumpets alone, you're going to see it's going to sound kind of phasey or just louder, actually. So it's not really doing anything. So in order to differentiate the second trumpet, what I've done is I've introduced a little bit of a delay, in this case, around 1,200 samples just to differentiate them in time a little bit so that there's not the phasing happening that results when two notes are playing identically. Now, we can also randomize the note positions, and that'll work. This isn't quite as random, but it is offsetting the attack of the two. All right, so that's not bad, but they're playing exactly the same tuning, which is unlikely to get a bit more of a realistic effect it'd be good to modulate the tuning a little bit. So on this double, what I've done is I've just done a very subtle pitch shifting down 11 cents just to get a subtle detuning. Now, it'd be better to get some kind of chorusing or to automate this to get the pitch moving back and forth so it's not always consistent. But for now, this will give you the idea of how you can double parts on the same instrument. All right, so that kind of works. So let's see what else we can do. We can have trumpet and tenor sax play together. So let's copy this trumpet to the tenor sax track and hear what these two sound like. But in this case, we're going to need to transpose the tenor sax down an octave. And let me just open this up here. I can do that simply in this program right from here. There's different ways of doing it, different DAWs. But let me just play this one alone so you can hear it. And what I like about the vintage horns instrument is that the key switches are consistent with the different instruments. So when I transpose by octaves, the key switches get transposed properly. So now the two of these together playing an octave apart. So this is not a unison any longer, but an octave with tenor sax and trumpet. (music) 
All right, that's working nicely. A little bit more of bite to it, a little bit more of an aggressive kind of approach. And we can do some other things to kind of change the flavor of it just with this same simple part. Let's say I want to have this play on muted trumpet. I'm going to just drag this down to muted trumpet and I'll leave it here and just mute it. So we're hearing it on muted trumpet. And let's double that with the alto sax. So again, I'm just muting and unmuting my regions selectively here. So this will be a slightly gentler sound with muted trumpet and alto. Here again in unison in the same octave. So a little bit subtler and gentler type of sound. Let's hear what it's like with the muted trumpet and the tenor. Not a usual combination, but might be interesting. Let's start that again. Doesn't work as well, in my opinion, but interesting to experiment with. Now, another thing we can do is double muted trumpet with flute, and this will definitely give a lighter, gentler kind of feel. So I'm going to double this up to the flute track by copying it up there, and I'm going to transpose this one up an octave. And let's hear these two together now. So again, a lighter feel, all this with the same single line. So let's mute this one and try some other doublings to give it a bit more weight. Let's bring in the trombone. Let's try trumpet and trombone. So I'm going to copy this down to the trombone. And here we're going to have to transpose down an octave to get it playing in the range that's good for this instrument. And here we'll hear it an octave lower than the trumpet. So let's mute that one and unmute the individual trumpet. That's working nicely. Let's hear it with the trombone and the tenor. They play in similar ranges. So this will be a unison part, but an octave lower than the original. Now, all this is simple unison or octave doubling, but we can layer these together and get a really full, rich sound. Now, again, remember, this is all just a single line. There's no harmonies other than unison or octaves. So let's start bringing in some of the other sounds, alto, tenor, trumpet, and trombone. Let's hear those. So having four horns playing that single line sure adds a lot more weight and impact. And of course, we can bring in the baritone sax and bring that nice and low. So I'm going to copy this down here. And this one's going to need to go down two octaves in order to be in the playable range. And let's listen to this. We've got a whole section happening. We can even bring in the double trumpet and that'll add even more weight. So those are some ideas on how you can get some unison and octave doubling. I'm going to mute this for a moment, and let's try an alternate baritone sax part that isn't doubling exactly and is a little more stylistic to this type of arrangement. Now, in this style of music, it's not uncommon to have the baritone sax playing separately from the rest of the section, doing a small little phrase that leads up to the root of the chord. And that's just what I've done here. I'll show it to you in the score as it's playing. It's basically going 5-1, basically D to G, and then climbing up to the G and then doing something similar when it gets to the C chord. And so on. Now, this video has run a little bit longer than ideally I would have liked it to, but I wanted to give you a sense of the flavor of the sounds of each of the individual instruments being doubled either in unison or in octaves and the different flavors that those generate. Next video will continue with some voicings.